Welcome, welcome back. So I heard some of y'all want some of that Thuvian meat paste. Well, that's what we're here to do. But before we do that, so I don't look like a big dum-dum, we're gonna show you where Thuvia is. Um, Thuvia, this is the map of Galarian here. I'll turn it over just because I don't know how to look on the video. But uh, this is the Moami Expanse here on the southern continent. We have Thuvia right here in the center, or will be the equivalent of just west of Egypt in our world in terms of climate and such. Uh, so I'll show you the political version of the map here. This is the political version if you're looking like on Founder VTT. Moangi Expanse here. I always use Moangi Expanse, very easy to point out. North of Moangi Expanse we have Thuvia. So that is where this meat pastry comes from. But without further ado, let's get to our ingredients. Uh oh, it's always the struggle, adventurers, right? Holding the map. There we go, all right. So we have our ingredients here. Please stay with me, studio camera. There we go, all right, so we'll go ahead and, we'll go ahead and list them off here. We have one and a half pounds of ground lamb here, probably the most expensive part of this meal. Uh, and then we have two finely chopped shallots right here. We have three cloves of garlic chopped, not minced, chopped finely. We have uh, one quarter cup fresh mint leaves chopped. Mmm, straight out the garden. And then we got some parsley. Again, I did not get, uh, my parsley hasn't grown big enough yet, but that is fresh chopped, not, um, not um, dry. And then let's see here. Uh, so we got salt, pepper, we got some coriander, and some cumin, and a puff pastry dough. Uh, and then we have one large egg we're gonna beat, and that's just for uh, coating the pastries. Um, before they go into the oven. But with that, let's get it started. All right, we're gonna go ahead and preheat the oven to 425 degrees. Step two, we're gonna combine the ground meat, shallots, garlic, mint, parsley, salt, pepper, cumin, and coriander into a bowl. Look at that. We're then going to separate them by hand into equal portions. Next, we're going to brush that pastry dough with the beaten egg and cut the dough into equal squares. Okay, here comes the most important part, pinching those pastries. As you can see here, those first few pastries that I tried to make were far too large in terms of the quantity I was trying to put into the pastry dough. It's much better to have a smaller portion that you know you can close instead of trying to close a pastry with too much filling. Lesson learned. As you can see, the other two closed much better than the first two. The secret is always using a fork to pinch the ends down. The more you do it, the better you get at it, just like any other skill. Now with the pastries nice and pinched, we're going to go ahead and put another layer of egg wash on before we put them in the oven. Hey, hey, hey we're finally ready to throw in the oven. So just so you know, this one here is probably like, uh, you know, as I stated earlier, this one's probably not gonna cook uh, in the proper amount of time. It's probably gonna need another nuking of about 10 extra minutes because the bake time is 20. Let's go ahead and get her rolling. Ooh, nice and hot. Right. Okay, Google, set a timer for 20 minutes. All right, before we even begin combining the spiked mint tea, which is what we're gonna pair our Thuvian spiced meat pastries with, we need to go ahead and start by making the spiced simple syrup. So instead of using one cup of sugar, I'm only using one third of a cup of monk fruit. 
It also calls for one cup of water, one cinnamon stick, one star anise, two whole cloves, and one quarter cup of crystallized ginger. Combine all ingredients into a pan and simmer that for 10 minutes. We then remove it from the heat and allow the syrup to cool before straining and removing the solids. All right, it's been simmering about eight to nine minutes now. And you can see that the, the crystallization from the ginger has come completely off. So there's pretty much no sugar left on the ginger, which is fine. Um, so again, the monk fruit should sweeten be sweet enough uh, and obviously way less calories. So those who are trying to make this while watching their watching their calorie count and all that stuff can do so. So we're gonna go ahead and do a taste test of this uh, of this fine liquid here. Oh, that's delicious. Uh, cinnamon. It's got like a cinnamon, like a warm cinnamon. Uh, light sweet, definitely, uh, definitely a, uh, gonna be a good syrup. I look forward to, uh, adding this to the drink. See you then. All right, all right, time to combine everything. Here we go. So we got four parts, ice mint tea, and your very own Caden's cup, a.k.a. My awesome mug that I, I forgot. Did you get that for me, babe? No, okay, I think my mom got it for me some time ago. Either way, very Caden like. Uh, no, it's not ale or anything. That is iced mint tea. We got two parts sweet whiskey, as you can see. I have not unsealed this, so this is gonna be new for me, too. This is a, a sweet whiskey. This is Kings Creek Black Label Honey Flavored Tennessee Sour Mash. Whiskey, say that five times fast. All right, uh, and then we got our one part simple syrup, which you did see me combine. Still steaming, try to cool it down a little bit, but this will cool it down for sure, and so will the ice, so I'm not too worried about it. Trying to do it all in one take here, trying to be a professional as uh, And then we got three fresh mint leaves, straight from the garden, real pretty there. Mmm, real mint, can't replace it, super, super good. All right, and then we got ice chips. We're just gonna be using ice cubes. I'm not, 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 not too concerned about that. All right, completely remove stems from the mint leaves. All right, so we'll go ahead and do that. There's uh, mint leaves, mint leaves, stems off. Very good. All right. Cool. And the rest will probably end up keeping for garnish, so I'm just gonna keep that off to the side for now. Let you, let, let you in here. Okay, uh, completely removed some mint leaves and muddle three leaves at the bottom of a cocktail glass. Uh, okay, so we're gonna go ahead and put that at the bottom of our cocktail glass. So, uh, let's see here. Oh, I'm just muddle it. Okay. Do -do 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 all right, so we're gonna go ahead and make sure the reason I'm muddling them is to release the, the scent. Make sure you get that scent and that flavor. All right, uh, the fact that I add spiced simple syrup. So, um, let's see, add spiced simple syrup, uh, whiskey and tea, and then top with ice chips, twist with a mint leaf between your fingers and use as garnish. So what I'm going to do here is because this is a syrup mix and mash here, uh, so most of it's gonna be minty, so a little over half of it. So what I'm gonna do is gonna go ahead and combine this in here and put some of that ice in there to get nice and cool. Then we're gonna use over, let's see, so if we're gonna do parts, we'll go ahead and try and do this. So we'll do, this is a ounce measure, this is Two ounces here. Let me go ahead and move this over and make this a little easier on myself. So it's gonna be two ounces. We'll just do it in ounces and make it nice and simple. So if we got four parts, that's gonna be four ounces. That's fine if it overflows a little bit. It's tea, it's gonna be fine. Alright, so 
four parts Eisman tea, two parts sweet whiskey. All right, let me go ahead and just get a little knife action going. All right. Very cool. All righty. Get this honey whiskey action. All right. All right, label's officially broken. Here we go. So we got four parts uh, mint tea, two parts, means spend two ounces of honey whiskey there. Get that good old whiskey. All right, here we go. Two parts, bada bing, bada boom. One part sweet honey syrup. So if that's two ounces, you can guess that this is one ounce. Very good, yes. So we're gonna take some of that syrup right there. Very sweet stuff. Uh, but again, made with monk fruit substitute here. Because we were trying to do this the healthy way. Here we go. And we're gonna take our, our, our mint here. We're gonna just mince it in our fingers here, nice and rough, so that all those flavors are released. They won't come out into the drink. That's fine. So here we go. We're gonna go ahead and recork this so it doesn't go bad. So we're gonna go ahead and shake them up. Mm -hmm. All right, so go ahead and add some ice cube in here. One second, we're we'll, we'll doing this live. I'm doing it live. We're gonna go ahead and get some more ice cube. All right, here we go. Nothing like doing it live. Didn't have enough ice in there. That's all right. That's all right. We're going to go ahead and take her off. Mm -hmm. Ooh, that is a minty strong minty. Strong mint flavor in there. Here we go. Got like a golden green look to it. No surprise, we that's whiskey. And look at that, perfect amount. So if you just go via ounces, Everything comes out just right. So let's go ahead and get some mint from the garden. So I'll be right back. And we're back from the garden. Here we go. Nice, lovely. This is actually chocolate mint for you mint lovers out there. Should definitely give it a shot. Smells like a little hint of chocolate and mint combined together like the ice cream. Yes. And no, I haven't had that ice cream in a long while. So. We're just gonna take this here. We're gonna hang it on the edge of our edge of our drink for a nice garnish. Bada bing, bada boom. Spiked mint tea. We'll go ahead and give it a shot. Um, here we go. I'm not the biggest fan of whiskey, but that actually is like a. I definitely still taste the whiskey in there. Um, it's got more more tea, more of a tea, like a. It's uh, how do I say this? It's tea with a slight tinge of whiskey, um, and a little bit of sweetness to combat the sourness of the whiskey. Like there's pretty much no sourness of the whiskey, but you can definitely taste the whiskey. Like, you definitely taste the barrel taste of it. So I'd give it a solid seven out of ten. All right, timer just went off. Time to pull them out and see how they look. Here we go. Oh, wow. Let's actually look. And smell super good. Look at that. Looks pretty good. Like I said, the big one's probably gonna stay in a little longer, but we'll, we'll, we'll take that take care of that off to the side. Taste time, here we go. All right, so we got some tzatziki dip, uh, Pinterest link below, uh, and we got our lovely Uvian meat pastries. Let's get her started. We'll start with this one, why not? Doing this one, it looks real pretty. So I'll move this out of the way so you can see it. We'll get a little bit of our dip action here. We'll just 
pull it off to the side. Mm -hmm. We'll go ahead and let's cut into it. There we go. All right, look at that. All right, it's gonna cook through most of the time just because, again, it's, it's like a meatball. It's not all just a meatball. There's stuff in it. So it's gonna, it's gonna cook easier. Even those really big ones we were able to cook through. Uh, so let's go ahead, we'll get a smaller piece here. Cut off that extra dough, I don't need all that dough. There we go. Mm-mm-mm. Mmm. Mm-mm. 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 Still take quite a bit of dough. So, I'm gonna go for a meatier piece here. Get a nice, meaty piece here. There we go. I guess. Yeah, let's try it by itself. Oh. Mm. Ooh, by itself. Got the shallot, the taste of the shallots coming through. Let's see what else we got in there. Yeah, I can taste it now. I can definitely taste the um, hint of garlic, for sure. Uh, and the cumin. I think the cumin is what's coming through because I'm like, I could definitely taste another spice in there really strong. So let's go ahead and get that with a uh, piece of that dip. Mm-hmm. Now it says to serve with a yogurt or chutney. I would recommend a tzatziki just because lamb, or, I mean, Lamb equals gyro. Gyro plus tzatziki is the bomb. So um, I could not recommend more making a tzatziki sauce with this. Not too hard. It's basically, it's um, yogurt, lemon zest, lemon juice, dill, uh, cucumbers, uh, and I forget one more, two more things, but again, all very simple stuff, very affordable. Link in the, the Pinterest to that recipe down below. With that, I'm gonna go ahead and chow away. Uh, also, let me know because uh, the Kingmaker Second Edition is coming to public, I believe, on the 28th of September. Um, so. I also know that the second edition Kingmaker has camping rules in it, along with like food buffs and different meals. If you guys are interested in me making those meals and pretty much turning this part of this channel into a cooking channel, I'm down. Let me know. I will try to make every recipe or, or food buff available in the second edition. Kingmaker uh, PDF when it comes out slash book. I'd love to have a physical book. Um, so let me know. Uh, but until next time, take it easy.